For the majority of people today, Christmas is over and Easter eggs are already appearing in the shops. For the church, it's still Christmas. There's six days left of Christmas. If we'd have been living two or three hundred years ago, we'd have had a month left. Because Christmas didn't finish till the 2nd of February. Candlemas. So just ponder that. I mean, said that, it's not as good as it sounds. Because in medieval days, that was the time when the, hard was rock, the ground was rock hard and they couldn't do any farming. They couldn't work. So it's not as good as it sounds, isn't it? 40 days of Christmas. But there we are, it's still Christmas. And we're reminded of that by this morning's reading. I'd like to finish, start with the first sentence of that. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see these things that had happened when the angels went away from them. Just think about that phrase for a moment. Although it refers to the shepherds, I like to feel it could easily, equally refer to Mary and Joseph. Just reading between the lines, you can almost hear an enormous sigh of relief. <sighs> Thank goodness that's all over. Perhaps now we can get back to normal life if things could ever be normal again. And it's at this point in the nativity story that we begin to get the feeling that all the fuss was beginning to die down. Things were coming back to earth, having had the heavenly. And Luke, as the writer, does this in a very subtle way. So let's just for a moment compare the two paragraphs I read this morning. Following the journey into Bethlehem, with no room at the inn, the, birth, the actual birth, the passage which was read begins with the gospel of an angel appearing to the shepherds in the field and bringing them good news. And what news? To you is born this day in the city of David a saviour who is Christ the Lord. Saviour who is Christ the Lord might not mean much in today's English but for those people in Israel the coming of a saviour of a Christ or a Messiah had long since been predicted and was long expected. Jesus was born into a society which was in captivity ruled over and policed carefully by Rome. A society where the expectation of a Messiah, as predicted by Old Testament prophets, were high, made them tingle, especially by a group such as the shepherds, the bottom of the social scale. But as it always is the case, oppression is felt most acutely. And what a message for those poor, humble people. And the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with fear. I bet they were. Hardly surprising, really. And if that wasn't enough, with the angel appeared suddenly a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is well pleased. It makes you breathless just to think about it. So what it must have been like for those poor, unsophisticated shepherds, we can hardly begin to imagine. To use a modern 20th century phrase, it must have been mind-blowing. Now what a contrast we have as we start this morning's reading. The angels went away from them into heaven. When they come out of shock, give themselves a shake, the shepherds rushed over to the stable to see this baby. And they told Mary and Joseph what had happened. And they were told they returned to their fields, to their jobs. 
in a slightly different mood, in fact, vastly different mood, with great joy and celebration. And we're told that there Mary was left to ponder on all that had happened. It's not a word we use very often nowadays, ponder. But it's, I, I quite, it's a nice word. I quite like it. It means to sit quietly and just mull things over. Ponder what had happened. All over by the shouting, you might say. Seems a long way from our modern life in the 21st century. When if we saw such a wonderful event, we'd probably try and explain it away. There's some sort of special effects created by AI, computers and laser lights. Although we'd probably find it impressive, we wouldn't be stunned and speechless as those poor shepherds were. For the majority of people nowadays, it's just a nice story. And we revel in its sentimentality at this time of year. But it still has volumes to speak to us in our busy and sophisticated modern lives, particularly at this time of year. Whether we like it or not, Christmas has become a time when our modern Western society seems suddenly to go mad, rushing around, frantically spending, for most people beyond their means, trimming everything up in bright colours, lights and glitter, as if in our own feeble way we're trying to recreate that spectacle that the shepherds beheld, the bright lights, the singing and all the rest of it. St. Luke, in the Gospel of St. Luke, we send greeting cards to people we never hear from. From one year to the next we never hear of them. We go to endless rounds of parties, eating and drinking generally more than is good for us. With the angels, shepherds and the wise men, as well as the general turmoil that a long journey can bring and the birth of a child also, we get at least a slight inkling how Joseph and Mary must have felt. They probably rushed off their feet. However, by contrast, today, a week later, cards sent too late, trimmings and decorations hung, although many are start to bring, get them down now. So a message on, was it Facebook about Christmas trees? Somebody was asking, what do we do with Christmas trees now? Where do we take them? Don't take them down yet. It's not time. Twelfth night. Is it next Wednesday, is it twelfth night? Thursday? But it gives us a moment to stop. We can't do any more regarding Christmas. We can only do what Mary did to stop for a moment and ponder on all that it meant. Those words, the angels went away from them into heaven, seem to speak something of the relief that we can feel this morning. Now, no matter how hard we could have tried, we couldn't have done any more. The big day, Christmas Day, was last week. A day for which we've been frantically rushing round for weeks before to get ready for. It's gone. The whole reason why the world goes mad at this time of year has finally come and gone as it first did over 2,000 years ago. So what are we to make of it all? Well, there are two points I'd like to leave you to ponder as we take a few short moments out of that busy festive routine to come and worship for the peace and silence of the crib and take a short time to wonder in amazement as those shepherds did and as the Holy Family did. Let us take a moment out of our lives today, out of our busy routines, just to ponder. 
and what to ponder. Firstly, we have that wonder of heaven come down to earth. A moment in which man and God meet. And Luke conveys this in the most startling of ways. We see, we read of the brilliant glory of heaven in the form of a throng of shining angels meeting the lowliest of mankind, those simple and sophisticated working men, the shepherds. As if the miracle of God coming down to share our human lot as a helpless baby, born into a poor family, were not enough. Luke magnifies his tremendous truth by the meeting of heaven and earth in that exchange between angels and shepherds. No kings, wise men, magi, whatever you want to call them, as in Matthew's version of the birth narrative, but a message which comes first and exclusively to ordinary, common, down-to-earth people. Shepherds. A powerful reminder that no one is beyond the reach of the gospel message. God's promise is for all people, rich and poor. And then we return to Mary, a young, simple and trusting girl who risked all in obedience to God. I talked earlier about things returning to normal in the second paragraph of this morning's reading, but really... That's reading too much into things as far as Mary is concerned. Life would never be normal again for her. We're left with those, the silence of Mary's thoughts. When all the excitement had died down. When the shepherds had gone and left the young couple with their baby. To ponder the meaning of these recent events. And that one sentence from Luke, for me, says it all. Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. That is where we are left at this moment in time. After the hustle and bustle of these last few weeks, we are left here on this Sunday after Christmas for a few short moments of quiet pondering all that this means. Spend a moment today at some time pondering. I know it's an odd word, but it's a lovely word. Ponder. And finally a note, especially for today, New Year's Eve, there's a common uh, idea around at this time of year you make resolutions. For myself, I don't, because I've broken so many in the past. If you want to stick to that tradition, if you want to make a resolution, make it just between yourself and God. To begin with, you'll have more chance of keeping it. And secondly, it'll be more meaningful, that resolution that you make. So if you want to make resolutions, feel free to do so. But do it just between you and God. I'll leave you with those thoughts.